While it's essential to get people to your website, it's also extremely important that once they're on your website, you make the buying experience as simple and as fast as possible. And the most effective way to allow your customers to buy from your website is by reducing the amount of information they need to enter during the checkout process. And enabling Apple Pay and Google Pay does exactly this. That's why they're referred to as express checkout options. When you enable Google and Apple Pay on your website, your customers can purchase from your website with the tap of a button without having to manually enter all their details into your checkout form. This tap to pay feature significantly expedites the checkout process and has many other benefits. It will increase the conversion rate of your website, which means you make more profit from the traffic that is already visiting your website. It will promote repeat purchases because your customers know that buying from your website is only a tap away. And the best thing about all of this is that you can set up Apple Pay and Google Pay on your website in a matter of minutes and it's completely free to do so. So with that said, let's jump into the website that I've set up for today's video and I'll show you how to add these express payment options into your website using the best plugin to do so. So to add Google Pay and Apple Pay to your WooCommerce website, we need to install a plugin. So let's go down and we'll go to plugins and add new. And in the search bar, you wanna search for funnel kit, Stripe, WooCommerce. And then you wanna activate this one here. So we'll go install now and activate. Now with that plugin activated, go to WooCommerce and then to settings. And you can see we're being prompted to start the onboarding wizard for the Stripe payment gateway plugin that we just installed. So I'll click start onboarding wizard and then I'll click connect with Stripe. And now I'm redirected to the Stripe website. So in my case, I only have the one Stripe account here. So that is selected. So I'll click connect. That says it's returning me to my WooCommerce website. So now we're back on our website and I'll enable to process credit cards with Stripe. So I'll turn that on and I'll go save and continue. And now we need to set up our web hooks. Now, what is really good about this plugin versus other plugins on the market that allow you to integrate Stripe into WooCommerce is that this Stripe plugin automates the creation of web hooks. And you can see here all the different web hook events that are going to be created automatically for us when we click this button. So I'm going to go ahead and set up web hook now. So I'll click that. And then the final step of the onboarding wizard is to enable the express checkouts, which is the Apple Pay and the Google Pay. So that's automatically enabled by default. So let's go ahead and click confirm. And we've got the big green tick, which lets us know everything's working. And now we're currently under the Stripe API settings and we know this is all working. Let's move over to the express checkout tab. So having a look here, the first checkbox here you have is to enable this and disable this. So if you ever wanted to remove this, you just come in here and obviously uncheck this, but we're gonna leave that enabled and we'll move down to this next setting here. So you can choose where in the checkout process you want to enable your express checkout buttons. So you can show them on your product pages, on your cart page, or on your checkout page, and you can do all three, or you could just do one. And we're actually gonna to touch on a really important aspect to where you output these on your website at the end of today's video, because there might be a specific case where you only wanna enable this on your checkout page. So definitely stick around for that point in today's video in case that affects you. Now, the next setting that we can change is the button text. And this is a text that appears before the icon. I'm happy with pay now, so I'll just leave that there. The button theme, we have a dark theme here. And if we click here, we have a light, which looks like this. And we also have a light with an outline. Now coming down here, a feature that's unique to this plugin as well that we've set up Stripe with today is that you can test the visibility to see whether these buttons here will show in your current setup. So my current setup right now is that I am on a Mac and I have the Chrome browser here. So if I click test visibility, because I'm logged into Chrome, Google Pay is supported, but Apple Pay is not supported. If I go into Safari, which is a browser that I've just switched to, and I click Test Visibility, you can see now Apple Pay is supported, but Google Pay is not. But coming back into Chrome, now coming down, the next setting here we have is to verify our domain. And this is a very important step because if you don't verify your domain, your Apple Pay icon or your button will not show on your website. So what you normally need to do is you need to log into your Stripe account and then you need to go to your settings here and then you need to edit your account's settings and then configure Apple Pay 
and then you need to add your domain and then down here you'll get a file that you need to download to your computer and then upload to a specific folder on your server. But the good thing about the onboarding wizard for this particular Stripe plugin is that it tries to do all of that automatically for you. So you don't need to go download a file and upload it to your server, it's all done. And so that's why through the onboarding process just then, we have in turn verified our domain. Now in some cases, this automated domain verification process might fail. And the reason that usually happens is that the folder that this plugin needs to create a file in might not have the right permissions. And so that prevents this plugin automatically creating a file inside a folder on your server. And that's gonna be particular to your server setup. Now, if that does happen to you, you'll get a warning message that looks like this, where it says, unable to verify domain, the path, and then it will list the path that it tried to create a file in, does not have right permissions. To verify the domain, please contact your host to provide right permissions and re-verify again. If you do need to go down that manual verification process, then come back in here after you've uploaded that file to your server, click re-verify domain, and as long as you see domain verification successful, you're good to go. So I'll just click reload. So now you can see the three different types of places that we can output our express checkout buttons, which are our product page, cart page, and our checkout page. They're separated into their own sections. So product, and then cart, and then down here we have checkout. And you have some options for each of them. So on the product page, you could choose to add the express checkout buttons below the add to cart. So here I am on a product page on this website. So you can see it's currently by default below the add to cart, but you can add them above or you could do an inline button. Now you can also change the text that separates them. So coming back here, that's that text there. Now coming down, we have this option for the cart page. So here I am on the cart page. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's the express checkout button there. So just the one placement for the cart page, but I think it's the appropriate placement. Now, before we go to the checkout page, Back here on our website, when we add a product to our cart here, we have this slide cart. And you can see that when you're using the Funnel Kit Cart plugin and you have this slide cart feature enabled, you also have the option to output your express checkout buttons on the slide cart. So that's separate to the cart options that you have here. So if you're in the boat where you're using the Funnel Kit Cart plugin and you have the slide cart enabled, the way that you can edit those settings is by going up here and going to funnel kit and then cart and then you have this option here so it's a new feature so we'll go to express checkout and then you can just toggle this on there so coming down let's go through the checkout settings so we can see that by default it's going to be positioned above the checkout form the titles express checkout and if we hover here you can change the button width by default it's a hundred percent and you get the same separator text here and you can change its alignment if you make the button not 100% width. So let's come back here and click to proceed to our checkout page. And now you can see Express Checkout, Pay Now with Google Pay, or they can come down and put in their details manually. So with Stripe now enabled and our Express Checkout buttons activated, let's go ahead and do a test transaction and see how this all works. And for this transaction, I'm gonna go ahead and disable these Express Checkout buttons from the product page and the cart. So we'll only output these on the checkout page. And once we go ahead through the checkout process, I'll come back and enable those other two options because they work a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and save changes. And then let's go to the front end of the website. And now let's imagine that this is your website and I'm your customer. So I'm gonna go to your shop page and having a look at your products, I really like the eyeshadow palette. So I'll click into there and I am going to get this today. So I'm gonna add this to my cart. And then now in our cart, we have that product and you can see that I've just unlocked a welcome discount and that's applied the welcome coupon down here. Now I'm gonna go see what else you have in your store. So I'll go back to your shop page and go down and I might check out this hand cream. So I'll click into this and I'm gonna get this. So I'm gonna add this to my cart. So now we have both items in the cart and you can see I'm $10 off unlocking free shipping. But there's a cart upsell here for lipstick that's $15. So I'll add that in there. And now I've reached the threshold to unlock the free shipping. So looking at my cart, I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to checkout. So I'll click checkout and then I land on your checkout page. And instead of going down and having to fill in all these details, and instead of having to go down and put in all my card details, all I need to do here is just click this button here. So I'll click to pay with Google Pay. 
And then this opens up my Google wallet with all my saved card details and my address. And then on my device, I just need to tap or press this button. So let's go ahead and click pay. And now they've been taken to the thank you page. So as you can see, using the express checkout feature was so much faster than the alternative. So now I wanna show you how the checkout process differs when you enable the express checkout buttons to show on the product page and also in your cart. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna click save changes and then we'll visit the front end of the website. So let's go to the shop and let's go down and go to the eyeshadow palette again. So let's add the eyeshadow palette to our cart. And now our cart is worth $60. But let's go back to our shop page again and come down and click on the hand cream. And let's add the hand cream to our cart as well. So now our cart has two items in it and it's worth $90 in order value. If I come back to this product page and I click to launch the express checkout with Google Pay, so I click this, you'll see that the amount that it's going to charge me is $30. And if we get out of this, that is the cost of the hand cream. So if you go ahead and activate the express payment buttons on your product pages, just know that paying for that, your customer is only buying that one product. So if you run a store where people are regularly buying multiple products in the one cart, it might be a wise decision to not enable this on your product pages. Whereas if people are mainly only buying one product at a time from your store, this is gonna be a great option for expediting the checkout process. Now, another thing that you need to be mindful of in regards to where you place your express checkout buttons is whether or not you have custom fields on your checkout form. If your customer clicks this express checkout button inside the cart and they don't go to the checkout page, any of the custom fields you have in your checkout form won't be validated or be taken from your user. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just say we go back into our dashboard and then I go down to funnel kit and we go to store checkout and then I edit our checkout and then I go to fields and then let's just say we add our custom field from down here, date of birth, and we drag that into here. And then we save changes. Now, if we go to the front end of our website and we open up our cart and then go to our checkout page, our checkout form now includes a custom field here where we're gathering data from our customers. If your customer is here and they purchase from your cart page by clicking on the express checkout button, any custom fields that are in your WooCommerce checkout form will not be validated or captured from your user. So if you have some data that you definitely need to capture from your customers and it's on your WooCommerce checkout form, then you might want to disable this express checkout button in the cart and only enable it on the checkout page. So now let's go through when your customers will see the Apple Pay option on your website or when they'll see the Google Pay option on your website. So let's get this straight from the horse's mouth in the Stripe docs. So we can have a look here and they break it down by the web browser and the wallet and then what button will be shown under those specific circumstances. So straight up, if somebody is accessing your website using Safari and they have Apple Pay enabled, they will see the Apple Pay option. If your customer is accessing your website using the Chrome browser and they have Google Pay enabled, then they will see Google Pay. But the exception to that rule is if your customer is accessing your website using Chrome, but they're on an iOS device, meaning something like their iPhone or an iPad, even if they're accessing your website using Google Chrome and they have Google Pay enabled, if they have Apple Pay enabled, they will see Apple Pay, even though they're accessing it from within Google Chrome. If your customers are accessing your website and buying using their computer and they're in Safari and they have Apple Pay enabled, if they're using something like a laptop and it has Touch ID, then they can just click to buy from your website using the express checkout button. They can just put their finger onto their touch ID and that will work. But if they're accessing your website in Safari on a device that does not have touch ID, what happens is if they're wearing an Apple watch, for example, like I'm doing now, if I was to buy from your website inside of Safari using my MacBook that doesn't have touch ID, I get a notification on my Apple watch and then I can just double tap to confirm that I wanna pay using Apple Pay. And that's explained here on Apple's website where they break down that Max with Touch ID will work with Apple Pay, but Max without Touch ID, the person just needs to confirm it using a Bluetooth connected device. So their iPhone or an Apple Watch. 
So as you can see, adding the Express Checkout options into your website has so many benefits for your customer and ultimately you as a business owner. And if you're looking to sell more of your products using WooCommerce, then that is what FunnelKit does. So feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also on your screen right now are two videos that the YouTube algorithm has selected just for you that it thinks that you're gonna get value out of. So pick one of these two videos and we'll see you in there.